so today uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about API security challenges and how to address them. And um, uh, as we know, uh, security uh, is probably the major pain for the entire ID, IT industry. And um, certainly this is true for APIs as well. Uh, obviously, uh, there is no way I can cover security challenges and how to address them and a good level of details in a 20 minutes presentation. So uh, what I'd like to do is to focus on a particular perspective on uh, security challenges and uh, how they can be addressed. And that perspective has to do with, uh, con in the context, uh, this perspective is in the context of API securities and API management. Uh, so first of all, uh, how many people are familiar with the term and concept of API management. Okay, quite some, many people. Uh, so just, you know, to reiterate some basic things, uh, API management is typically a concept that covers a lot of aspects around managing API, APIs themselves and helping API consumers. It consists of very many features, capabilities, and components. Uh, such as, you know, API catalog, where people can register their services and APIs, they can manage their life cycle, they can get access to metadata, such as Swagger or Visdal for SOAP services, get access to documentation, sample files, and so on. Uh, as well as APIs manage uh, aspects such as monitoring, security, and by the way, Keith from Okta in the two presentations ago, I like that he emphasized the fact that security without proper monitoring, auditing, you know, trails, that's actually half broken security already in the first place. So security is a lot of many things. Uh, and again, I want to talk about only one particular aspect, which is explicitly in the context of API management. And I'll try to convince you to those who have to be convinced, of course, and are not yet, that API management, it's actually one of the uh, major uh, ways to help you address uh, common uh, API security. Within the API security, uh, I'm gonna again focus only on uh, one few particular aspects that have to do with authentication and authorization. Again, simply because security is so much more than that. Again, referring to Keith and, you know, talking about monitoring, logging, and auditing. So uh, let's review a few basic things. So we have, you know, basic API consumer that consumes API. Uh, we know that we have a lot of challenges around implementing security uh, and different security models. Uh, things complicate when we, you know, try to consider that even simple interaction uh, throughout different environments, on-premises, cloud, potentially hybrid. Uh, what are the security models that we know of? Uh, technically speaking, for especially for REST, a RESTful APIs, there are only few, you know, uh, security models that are considered to be standard, meaning those that are well defined by the uh, industry specifications. Uh, you know, things like username, password, X509 certificates. We can drop here Kerberos. It is also well kind of defined. Uh, these models have been around for more than 20 years. Everybody knows them. Uh, there are a few emerging models like OAuth, and you know there are a lot of presentations at this event about OAuth. Uh, this one is a bit more complicated, well, I would say quite more complicated than you know basic authentication or X509 certificates. So these are standard. Why are they standard? Because technically speaking, if I build an API and I want to expose it to a developer, I can simply say, well, you have to implement basic authentication, uh, you know, security model, and that will says it all. So the developer wouldn't have to know anything else about the security model of my API. Basic authentication is well defined. All he has to know is what specific username password to provide, or what specific certificate to insert with the, you know, let's say mutual authentication. <coughs> with auth, it's a little bit more complicated. There was already discussions about that. Uh, you have to know which particular flavor of OAuth specification uh, is implemented within the security model. Uh, you have to know quite a bit about the OAuth provider, which is the OAuth server, uh, you know, how to communicate with it, 
uh, what kind of you know configuration uh, needs to be uh, uh, known to the uh, API itself and to API consumer in order to understand how to communicate through auth properly. Uh, SOAP services, of course, have a lot more standard security models within the WS star specification, but we'll focus on REST APIs uh, mostly in this presentation. And of course, there is a lot of custom uh, you know, security models built on top of REST APIs. For example, API keys, very simple. Why it is considered custom? Because there is no standard. There is no standard how to you know, provide API keys, how many there will be. Uh, do you send them in a query parameter, in HTTP header? What's the name of that query parameter? There are no standards, so it has to be delivered out of the box, you know, the knowledge about these security models uh, to the developer so that he knows how to call the API. So we have to deal with a lot of different security models overall. Then it comes the concept of the uh, API gateway. So what is the API gateway, which is an element of API management infrastructure. It's basically a specialized reverse proxy, but it's kind of charged with the responsibility and loaded with the knowledge of how to deal with APIs specifically. So it's like a middleman uh, that sits between API consumer and the API itself and acts as a broker effectively. Uh, the gateways might be located uh, on premises, they might be uh, you know, in the cloud, on-premise gateways might be serving as a kind of DMZ located gateways to protect access into your, uh, to your internal APIs or the, the on-prem gateway might be in entirely located inside your network and help integrate your internal applications between each other without even potentially exposing anything outside because integration challenges are still, ex still exist especially within the large enterprises. The, the, what the gateway can do, it can encapsulate these security challenges inside itself. And there are two different uh, you know, security lags, if you will, in this communication, the inbound and outbound. And you see I intentionally placed everything in this dotted rectangle, trying to indicate that this is security is close to the gateway itself. So on the inbound side, the gateway uh, enforces security when API consumer calls into the gateway and the gateway provides facade service or sometimes called virtual service. So for consumer, that is actually the service, right? Consumer doesn't know that there is something behind it. There is a backend API. Uh, so uh, the, the service on, the, inbound, on the, the API gateway on its inbound side enforces security, so it you know, provides authentication, authorization, looks at this uh, and deals with this inbound security on behalf of the backend API. So your backend API might be completely decoupled from the security that is exposed uh, to the API consumer and that will be processed uh, by the gateway itself. Uh, and then there is outbound side. This is when uh, gateway now turns around and makes a call to the backend API. These securities can be exactly the same, they can be quite different. So uh, another interesting aspect, if we look deeper inside this inbound and outbound security, what we'll see is that you might have uh, actually some security mediation implemented. Mediation, that means that on inbound side, uh, when, where API gateway enforces security, it can expect any type of you know, uh, security model. It can expect username, password, X5 and 9, Kerberos, uh, JWT or OAuth. Uh, there might be some custom things like API keys or something even more custom. And then on the outbound side, it can be completely different security. Of course, it can be passed through security model, right? So it may be, let's say, basic authentication on inbound side and basic authentication on the outbound side. Moreover, even identity itself can be passed through the same exact username password. Or maybe identity is mediated. It's one username password or maybe thousands of username passwords on the inbound side. It's only one username password on the outbound side. In reality, what we see with our customers who are using API management is that actually mediation is more typical than uh, pass-through security. Why? Because it simplifies deployment and managing of the backend APIs. And backend APIs, that is your business, right? This is what 
your business, your APIs are actually doing. They're crunching numbers, they access databases, you know, uh, serve orders, you know, deal with bank accounts, whatever. So it is always uh, effective if these backend APIs could be decoupled with how they are actually exposed. Still, still deployed with security, but not necessarily with security that will be used to access, ultimately access them with, uh, by the consumers. So uh, you might have you know, hundreds and hundreds of business APIs and you, you might start de developing and deploying them exactly the same unified way within your enterprise on premises or in the cloud. Because the way they are deployed internally, technically speaking, has nothing to do with how they will be ultimately made available to consumers. So the internal communication can be, let's say, Kerberos within uh, leveraging your Windows Active Directory. And then the gateway located in DMZ uh, starts exposing your service exactly as it's designed and meant to be exposed to the consumer. That exposure through the gateway doesn't require any coding. That's what's important. It's all about configuration of the gateway. Remember I mentioned earlier that <coughs> API management infrastructure typically consists of uh, API gateway, then API provider portal, and uh, typically also developer portal. So typically provider portal will make it possible to remotely and securely configure these gateways dynamically. Uh, so you deploy your backend, you instruct your gateway how to connect to the backend, what security needs to be implemented here, and it can be again simplified if it is on premises, uh, or it can be you know, sharpened or adjusted for your specific internal needs. Uh, and unified to all the backends. And then dynamically and remotely, you'll start configuring gateway to expose your backend service uh, using appropriate security. In fact, if the API management infrastructure is flexible enough, it can take your backend API and en enable with much greater agility and capability to deal with security models because it can expose not just one endpoint, but many different endpoints with many different security models. So you might give your consumers flexibility to use whatever endpoint they are comfortable with, maybe one with basic authentication for, I don't know, mobile application and, uh, uh, I don't know, mutual X509 for, for business partner and enterprise or, or uh, you know, security. So the same backend now can be exposed with multiple different security models. Uh, another interesting aspect, we all know that security is all about authentication and authorization. Uh, so, uh, and, and there was a talk about that. So again, what's important is that the gateway can absorb responsibility to deal with that. Your backend services do not have to deal with authorization anymore to, in understanding, okay, I have username, password, I have identity, I have a JWT token with claims, but can I give access to the backend API with that identity uh, or maybe a particular operation of that API. Uh, gateways, again, as part of API management infrastructure can absorb that responsibility. You can configure access rules and that there is complex authorization logic within the gateway if the uh, API gateway vendor allows that. So it's a huge benefit because you're completely pushing that responsibility onto the gateway. Your backend service might, you know, it will pre-authenticate, pre-authorize everything, then it will turn around and make a very simple call, maybe, you know, with its own certificate or username, password or whatever to the backend. And the backend knows, okay, if the message comes from gateway, that means authentication authorization already happened. Uh, finally, one more aspect I want to talk about, uh, the uh, API management gateways, the benefits uh, for the bi-directional security. Is it, this is the question of ownership. Who owns the gateway? Imagine yourself, you are API provider and you own gateway in terms that you, you, you control the, the configuration of the gateway. In this case, and that's very typical, you basically protect your API uh, by placing gateway in front of your API, whether it's in DMZ or in the cloud, right? So, uh, but uh, what if you are actually a consumer? You have to consume somebody else's API. Let's say you need to consume, uh, I don't know, Salesforce.com API or uh, uh, you know, Google API, whatever, business partner API. If you own gateway, it's 
close to you, not necessarily from networking perspective, but close to you from ownership perspective. You control it. Then the gateway will help you to consume that external uh, API. For example, again, you can make the call internally using, I don't know, username, password, and then the gateway will take responsibility to deal with all the complexities of OAuth. You don't have to write a single line of code within your uh, development application. So ultimately, uh, again, if this is your kind of domain, you are both pro you are provider, the gateway helps you to secure your APIs. If you are consumer, uh, the, the same gateway bi-directionally helps you to consume somebody else's API. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. Very short presentation. What I meant again to emphasize and highlight is that your API security challenges can be and should be delegated to API management infrastructure uh, because that's where things can happen on behalf of you. You don't have to develop any code. It's all about configuration. Um, that's it. Questions?